And you know, parents have a responsibility for their children, and there are many aspects of a child's life that you ought to be in control of. Now, as your children begin to grow and get older and older, you know, you gradually allow more and more freedoms, but, you know, and, and you need to determine what those are going to be. But at the same time, you know, you need, you're, you're trying to teach your children wisdom. You're trying to give them all the, all the right things, all the right tools they're going to need, because one day they are going to be on their own. They are going to be gone. But as a parent, you need to watch over that and really be careful who uh, your children are, are becoming friends with. We see in Genesis 34, Dinah, and, you know, Jacob was a good guy. Right? Jacob was a pretty good dad, but he allowed um, his, this daughter to go off, basically, and, and make friends with the world, so to speak. I mean, this is the application that's being done here. If you look at verse number 1, Genesis 34, the Bible says, And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And this is when they were in Shechem, sojourning. It says, And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her. And defiled her. And then it says, and he loved her, and he wanted to marry her and stuff. But basically what happened is, Shechem commits fornication with Dinah. And I don't believe that this was forced. Nowhere does it say that she was forced. Some people have said that because it says, well, he took her and he lay with her. But the Bible is pretty clear when it's talking about people being forced. Right? And that was not the case here. And normally what you see is when people are forcing someone else, Usually after the act, they hate that person because you hate them anyways by, by forcing yourself on them. Just like with Amnon, when he forced Tamar, he wanted to have nothing to do with her after that. It's not like he's looking to then get married to her, right? So here we have Shechem who, you know, he takes a hold on her basically and he lays with her. Doesn't say he forces her, just he lays with her. And then he wants to get married to her and everything else, but she's defiled. Why? Because she commit fornication. Now, it's no coincidence that verse 1 says she went out to see the daughters of the land, and then before you know it, in verse 2, she's committing fornication. So she goes out and makes friends with these other girls that are from, you know, basically these heathen girls just out in the world, and then she ends up doing like they do. Because... The other thing that we learn from this story, you say, well, Pastor Burton, isn't that being a little judgmental? How could you say that the daughters of the land were that bad? Well, when it talks about Shechem, it says that he was more honorable than basically like anyone else in that area where he wanted to marry her and kind of do the right thing. Which tells me that other people were just committing fornication. It wasn't that big of a deal. And he, they, they weren't honorable. But at least he's like now trying to marry her and trying to, kind of, you know, trying to, to, to make up for still going out of order anyways. But he was more honorable than, than the other people. This was a problem because they didn't have the fear of the Lord in that, in that community among those people at all. They were, they were not, um, that's not what they believed. So when it comes to your children and their friends, you know, you, you got to keep an eye on the influence that they're going to have. Because friends influence people. Your friends will influence you. Your kids' friends, definitely, especially when you're younger, you got, you're impressionable. You know, they often pick up other habits from other people. You know, you, you got to keep an eye on that. Now, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's up to your discretion, obviously. They're your kids. But like everything with parenting, it's work. Don't get too lazy or lackadaisical or, or, or flippant into just thinking, oh, yeah, whatever, it'll be okay. Because oftentimes, just one wrong friendship can do a lot of damage. Right. It was Amnon's friend that gave him the bright idea of putting himself in that whole situation with Tamar to be able to end up committing the sin that he never should have committed ever, obviously. But that, that was all the influence of his wicked friend. Friends, friends have a lot of influence on people, and that's something that you need to be able to do is set up a control on who your children are being friends with so they don't get these just real wicked people as friends.